2025 early look for potential Social Security cost of living increases and Medicare costs. In this video, we get an early look at what the powers that be estimate your Social Security cost of living adjustment and Medicare premiums, deductibles, and co-payments will be. I'm also going to cover the Part D drug plan changes brought about by the Inflation Reduction Act. If you take brand name or specialty medications, then you will want to pay attention to this for sure. And I'll talk about the possible Medicare Advantage changes for 2025. So if you have a Medicare Advantage plan or you are considering one, then please pay attention to this part. And be sure to see my health tip at the end of this video. Hi, I'm Chris Prang, the Medicare Analyst, Licensed Agent in 14 states, and I am based out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Maximizing your Medicare should be important to you. My goal is to help people like you make a wise and confident decision about all of your Medicare choices so that you can protect your income, your assets, your savings, and your health. If today happens to be your birthday, then a very happy birthday to you. Henry Ford said, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. Let's start with Social Security COLA, or Cost of Living Adjustment. The Senior Citizens League estimates that the cost of living adjustment will be 2.57%. That's down from 3.2% in 2023 and 8.7% in 2022. But it's just about what the 20-year average is of 2.63%. In their report, they state, our model points to a substantially lower COLA for the next year after the 3.2% COLA in 2023. The 2025 COLA prediction is about 2.57% down from 2.66% just last month, says the Senior Citizens League Social Security and Medicare statistician, Alex Moore, who is a managing partner at Blacksmith Professional Services. They go on to state, quote, the fact is that the COLAs have become less and less likely to keep up with inflation over time. As shown in the chart below, just one of five COLAs implemented so far in the 2020s has outpaced inflation compared to 40% in the 2010s and 60% in the 2000s and 1990s. So do you think this 2.57% potential increase is enough to keep up with inflation? Let everyone know in the comments section below. I don't think it will. According to some estimates and reports, poverty has increased among Americans 65 and older, going from 9.5% of older adults in 2020 to 14.1% in 2022, likely higher in 2024. Next, new Medicare premiums, co-payments, and deductibles. Part A deductible is estimated to go from $1,632 to $1,684. The co-payment for inpatient hospital stays, day 61 to 90, is estimated to go from 408 to 421. And then the co-payment from day 91 to 150, which are your 60 lifetime reserve days, is estimated to go from 816 to 842. Skilled nursing facility co-payment for days 21 to 100 is expected to go from 204 to 210. 50. Then we have Part B. The premium is expected to increase from $174.90 to $185, and the deductible is expected to go from $240 to $257. And then we come to Part D. Oh boy, we got some huge changes likely coming. First, the base premium is going to go from $32.74 to $36.78. This premium is only for the purpose of calculating the late enrollment penalty for Part D, that penalty is 1% of the base premium and then is multiplied by the number of months you haven't had Part D coverage. The deductible is expected to go from $540 to $590. The initial coverage limit, or benefit limit now, is going from $5,030 all the way down to $2,000. The coverage gap, also known as the donut hole, is gone. The catastrophic threshold is going to go from $8,000 all the way down to $2,000. The Medicare Trustees Report explains it this way, quote, as required by the provisions of the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, the initial benefit limit will end at the catastrophic threshold beginning in 2025, and the catastrophic threshold will be reduced to $2,000 in that year. Thereafter, the catastrophic threshold will be indexed by program growth. So while this $2,000 out-of-pocket threshold will certainly save some Medicare beneficiaries a lot of money on their prescription medications, it's likely going to increase the cost for the majority of Medicare beneficiaries. So much for inflation reduction. The big question is, how will they make up for this? 
Will Part D premiums go up? Some industry experts expect Part D premiums will go up 20 to 30 percent. Will plans incorporate the deductible more? Will co-payments and or co-insurance go up? Will medication prices in general increase? Will the formularies cover less medications? Will they have more barriers to care like quantity limits, prior authorizations, and step therapies on medications? Will some companies drop out of Part D altogether? And I can already tell you that answer is yes. So pay attention for your annual notice of change coming in September to early October and any notice that your plan is terminating. Stay tuned, we will know shortly. Next, we have IRMA, the Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. If your income is over certain limits, then you pay an increased premium for both Part B and Part D. It is based on your Magi, and no, I am not talking about the three wise men that came to visit Jesus. Magi is your modified adjusted gross income, and that includes not just your wages, but also dividends, capital gains, tax-exempt interest income, and more. So your investments could affect your Medicare premiums. If you take money out of an investment for say some large ticket item purchase like a car, home improvement, college tuition, you could very well get dinged for the extra premium. So please be careful. The projected IRMA income starting point is going from 103,000 to 105,000 for a single filer and 206,000 to 210,000 for a married filing jointly. You can check out the chart here to see where you will fall and the additional premiums you will pay. And now we come to Medicare Advantage for 2025. The Part D benefit changes could and should affect Medicare Advantage as well. If it turns out that plans will be paying more once the out-of-pocket threshold is met, then it seems likely that the plans will adjust premiums and or benefits or both. As I reported in another video, Medicare Advantage is facing headwinds. First, because of prior authorizations. The government is trying to crack down on prior authorization issues. What that means is if Medicare Advantage companies are going to have less leeway when it comes to what procedures and treatment they could potentially deny coverage for, then they will have to make up for it somewhere. Network issues. Over the last couple years, more hospital groups have started dropping out of the Medicare Advantage networks. Now, many times within months, they are right back in after payment issues are resolved. But you still need to be careful to make sure that your doctor and hospitals of choice are in the plan's network for the coming year. CMS and Congress have not increased how much they pay Medicare Advantage companies as much as the companies had hoped for. That leads to the likelihood of the plan's increasing premiums and or lower benefits and or doing both. Because of these issues, there is already the strong probability that some of the plans will be terminated by the Medicare Advantage companies. But don't fret over this one. It could be very good news. If your plan terminates, the plan will send you a notice in October notifying you about that. With that notice, there should be a section in there that states you now have a guaranteed right to purchase a Medicare supplement policy regardless of past or present health issues. So if you wanted a Medicare supplement and you couldn't get one because of health issues, well now will be your chance if your plan terminates. If that turns out to be your situation and you are from one of the states that I do business in, then reach out to me in October for guidance and for help. Also, the Medicare Advantage companies will have to start notifying of people of what's called a mid-year benefit notification requirement. Starting next year in 2025, Medicare Advantage plans will be required to notify plan members about their unused extra or supplemental benefits like dental, vision, hearing, over-the-counter, etc. The idea is to remind members and to let them know that they have benefits they haven't used. Doing this will likely increase utilization of the extra benefits, therefore causing either premium increases, benefit reductions, or both. So some good changes coming, but some disruption as well. As we get closer to October and in October, I will provide more updates about 2025. Please consider subscribing so you can get that info once I put it out. And be sure to be paying attention for your annual notice of change from the insurance company if you have a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare Part D drug plan. It could be vital this year. If you have any questions about what I've just gone over and when you are ready for my help in maximizing your health care and retirement insurance coverage and making a wise choice when it comes to all of your Medicare insurance options and you live in one of the states which I'm licensed in, which you can see here, then please feel free to reach out to me either by phone or through one of my contact forms on my website. We will have an open and honest conversation about your health care needs and philosophies and budget and I'll do my best to answer your questions or concerns that you may have 
Once we determine what is best for your unique needs and budget, I will then enroll you in the plan or the plans of your choice and of course be available down the road for your support. Stay up to date and gain more insight on maximizing your Medicare insurance, then please go ahead and subscribe and who do you know who may benefit from this info? Please share it with them. One last thing, Dr. Peter Atia says, quote, if you are interested in longevity, if you are interested in playing with your great grandkids, you want to prioritize muscle mass. Never in the history of civilization has a 90 year old said, I wish I had less muscle, unquote. Muscle or resistance training has numerous benefits. One, for skeletal health, strength training can help prevent osteoporosis and frailty by stimulating bone growth. Muscle training can also help with posture, aches and pains, and injuries. Two, mobility. Strong leg muscles can help seniors maintain safe and independent mobility. Three, chronic disease. Muscle training can help prevent chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes. Four, mental health. Feeling strong can also improve mental and emotional health. You may want to check with your healthcare professional before you get started. Hopefully they are in good shape themselves. And I do hope that encourages you. I'm Chris Prang, the Medicare analyst. Make it a great day.